Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, the New World Order is rapidly being set up on a global scale. Wars, you name it, everything that's happening, government upheavals, things that are taking place, like in the case of Israel. AP News reporting Israeli government advances judicial overhaul despite the uproar. That's exactly right. As I mentioned to you more than two years ago, Israel will be the head of the New World Order. And as head of the New World Order, it is believed so much by uh, the Israelis and many evangelical ministers that are CIA and NSA pundits uh, certainly do concur that Israel is to be the head and that the law is to come out of Jerusalem. This is why the reform, this is why the overhaul and uh, the states here in this article here, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government on Tuesday for the first time advanced a plan to overhaul the country's legal system, defying a mass uproar among Israelis and calls for restraint from the United States. Well, the United States is only doing that for lip service. The vote marked one preliminary approval for the plan, but it raised the stakes in a political battle that drew tens of thousands of protesters into the streets spark criticism from influential, influential sector of society and widen the rifts in an already polarized country. The 63, notice the vote, the 63 to 47 vote after midnight gave initial approval to a plan that would give Netanyahu's coalition more power over who becomes a judge. It is part of a broader package of changes that seeks to weaken the country's Supreme Court and transfer more power to the ruling coalition. You have to understand, I told my wife from the very beginning about this here, that when it comes to uh, what's happening in Israel, the one thing that they're going to do is they must first, they must first bring down the Supreme Court so there can be no opposition. And that's exactly what they're doing in Israel. Uh, I can only imagine what's going to happen in this country as well in the not so distant future there. Uh, let's move on though. Netanyahu also is saying that he is ready to strike nuclear facilities after a secret meeting, according to the report there. I want to play just a little clip here of where he's talking. He's actually beginning to talk about Russia and Putin and their relationship there in the beginning of this. Uh, because like I said, don't kid yourself, Israel does have a relationship with Russia. And in fact, I'll be doing a special broadcast on Patreon today about how the government agencies and things of that nature there, the biblical side of their fight, it is a biblical side. Let's listen into what Putin has to say, I mean, excuse me, what Netanyahu has to say here. Putin and to have our military speak with the Russian military to avoid these clashes, to reserve our the freedom of action of our Air Force against Iran's attempts to implant itself in uh, Syria and open there a second Lebanese front against us, a second terror front, like the one they have with Hezbollah, which is a wholly owned Iranian proxy. And it's been successful. We've had hundreds of sorties in uh, Syria to prevent Iran from implanting itself militarily. Uh, that That has worked. Uh, but it has been, uh, a condition for that has been to uh, assure that Russia and Israel do not enter into a shooting war over the skies of Syria. Uh, I think that uh, on the question of uh, uh, on the question of uh, 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 other questions like Syria's or rather Russia's dealings with Iran, we disagreed. I told him you're making a big mistake. The fact that you deal with Iran, the fact that you uh, trade with them, that you uh, make multi-billion dollars deal with them was something that will bite you ultimately, but it's definitely threatening us. And I opposed them on that. So we had an agreement on one area, a disagreement in another area. But I also believe that we should place heavy sanctions on Iran and those who advocate lifting the sanctions, which is what this nuclear deal would do if it ever gets signed, that would uh, bring hundreds of billions of dollars, not only to Iran, but to Russia's coffers as well. So the people are t saying, let's take a st tough stance against Russia are actually taking a soft stance when they are willing to lift these sanctions off Iran. I, I, <clears throat> I want to mention here and what I'm watching as we see how this is unfolding and, and being built up. And I also want to thank uh, uh, Sister Rosa as well as Charles on Twitter there uh, for sending some of this information uh, and Lior as well out of Israel. Uh, Lior just sent me another one there about uh, Iran smuggling weapons in under the guise of uh, the Turkish earthquake there under humanitarian aid. 
Uh, but, uh, and then of course Elizabeth as well. So the situation that I'm watching though, steadily though, is a complete buildup of a new world order. The theocracy that Netanyahu set up, and of course these eloquent words that he puts in here about Iran and Russia and you know, and their agreements and disagreements. But all the while, as I see this too, and, and as he mentions about this nuclear deal that could go forth with Iran, he's really talking about the Biden administration. Well, don't worry, they've already been working on that issue as well. And as I told you once before, the big smoking gun or the elephant in the room is definitely going to be Trump coming back into power. Well, oddly enough, the Supreme Court is considering a case to reinstate Trump, according to Newsweek. Uh, this article here that was published here on uh, uh, just a few days ago on the 17th of February, 2023, today, of course, being the 24th of February, said so the U.S. Supreme Court is set to consider whether or not to hear a lawsuit that speaks to remove President Joe Biden from the White House and reinstate former President Donald Trump to office. I don't know if we mentioned this over on Patreon, if we've mentioned this on this broadcast here, but I, we, have, we have stated somewhere that the elite have already asked Biden to step down. He has refused to do so. And then I was told all cards are on the table for his removal. They wanted Kamala Harris to be able to, to run the duration of her term, but they're looking for different means to be able to get him out for this last year and have someone else in reins of power and has more to do with new world order in Iran than anything else. Well, try telling this to a guy with dementia. Doesn't go over too well, does it? Anyway, uh, so we have here the, the Brunson versus Adam lawsuit claims that lawmakers violated their oaths of office by allegedly failing to investigate a foreign intervention in the 2020 presidential race, which allegedly rigged the election against Trump. The case is based on a claim that the defendants who include Congress uh, members Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and former Vice President Mike Pence voted to certify the 2020 presidential election after receiving a valid request from 154 members of Congress to investigate an unfounded claims of electro electrical, excuse me, electoral fraud in six states. The Supreme Court declined to consider the lawsuit on January the uh, 9th, but the plaintiff, Roland Brunson, filed an appeal on January 23rd, and now the court has to reconsider whether or not to hear the case. According to an update of the Scottish website that, that read the lawsuit was distributed for conference on Friday. Hmm. Wouldn't that be interesting? And then you would have the duo, Trump and Netanyahu once again. What would they be considered? The two witnesses? Who, the, who knows? I already know that many of the Jewish rabbis consider that they are the two messiahs, the Mashiach Joseph and the Mashiach Ben David. So I can see how that could certainly play to Israel's favor, especially leading up to a one world government. So that's where we're looking at right now. And uh, well, also, the uh, Western Journal reporting Israel informs Biden's admin is prepared to attack Iran's nuclear program after extremely grave development. So the Israeli prime minister held a series of secret meetings with top military officials over preparations for possible attack on Iran's nuclear facilities, according to the Israeli broadcaster Channel 12. Netanyahu held at least five meetings with Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, Israel's Defense Forces Chief of Staff Herzi uh, uh, Halivi, and the head of two Israel's intelligence services, other top officials discussing strike Iran's nuclear program, Channel 12 reported Wednesday, according to the Times of Israel. Uh, these things are definitely starting to develop. They're going to develop very rapidly. And of course, ultimately, they got to bring out the big Satan, the Gog of Magog War, the, however they want it to play out, okay? This is what people don't get. They set the stage to play it out the way they believe it is biblically. That's something we're going to talk about on Patreon today, so we hope you join us over there. We're going to be looking at how they play that game. Mm. Anyway, I don't know if I'm leaving anything out or not. Uh, let's, let's hope not. Um, situation is very dire, very grave. My wife is going to be doing a, a report on her channel on Odyssey. Just go to odyssey.com, look up Israeli News Live. You'll find her broadcast there. Not sure when she's planning on doing that, but I know she's been preparing for days now and uh, she'll be going more into the uh, theocracy of Netanyahu and what it means for you uh, 
uh, what it means for the world. We are headed and we are in a very dire times. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support.